Vroom, vroom, vroom! Okay, maybe not. Not quite yet. Okay, well, I do have a few things I'm going to do today. Finally got confirmation my camshaft and valve parts are out for delivery. So whenever they show up, I can actually put that motor together and have that ready to go. Um, no sign of the frame yet. It's awkward trying to work on bodies that are sitting on a bunch of old tires and stuff. So I figured today I'm going to address the steering column issues. Um, it's, the horn is completely kiboshed. The wheel's not mounted correctly. Uh, I think the only thing that works is the turn signals actually cancel. So I don't need to do anything with that plastic piece in there, but I still got to pull it out because the ignition lock cylinder is screwed on this. You don't need a key to start it. Um, so, first things first, take the steering wheel off. I'm going to take off that nut first. First socket I grabbed was a spark plug socket, but who gives a damn, it'll work. Sickly feeling that none of this is right. Definitely not the right washer. Well, let's see. You're supposed to use a pulley for this. Let's see if it'll actually go or not. Oh, it was actually on a little more solid than it looked. Once you get your wheel off in this situation, you got to pull this hub here. And to do that, you need a steering wheel puller. The first thing you got to do is find the right bloody bolts, which I just happen to have because they're the same as the uh, uh, harmonic balancer. Yes, I keep all my puller bolts in the ziplock because you never know. Which bloody piece you're going to need next? You need the pointy end here to go into the countersink on the shaft, otherwise you damage it. Screw that sucker all the way in. And that'll be a three quarter, of course. Okay, I had to get a little creative here. Obviously the steering column's not uh, attached to anything. So, it was freewheeling pretty bad, so I put a pipe wrench on the collar here. It's a pretty solid piece of steel, and you can see it's been banged up before. So I wasn't going to hurt it any more than it was, and as soon as I did that, it popped right off. So poor did its thing. I've taken them off without a puller before. It's pretty sketchy, let me tell you. Uh, well worth the money to invest in a harmonic balancer puller. It has so many other uses. Um, they're not really that expensive. What you do when you don't have a puller and you're desperate is you sit in here like this and you pop your knees up on behind the steering wheel, push real hard on it, put a hand on top so it doesn't come back and smack you in the face, and just tap the column with the nut on it. And a lot of times just that will pop it off. They're not really on that hard, but you just got to watch because a buddy of mine was doing it one day and he didn't have his hand up and it came loose and the thing caught him right in the bridge of the nose. Okay, the next thing you gotta do is push down on this uh, this locking plate here because there's a little split collar in here and you can tell why the horn wasn't working until the plastic's busted away here. Okay, again, you can do it other ways or you can get the damn right tool. Again, not expensive. These, uh, these come with, with the collar here. You pull this pin out and you turn it around. One side's metric, one side's imperial. So it works in Canada. And with the right tool, all right, in place, pushing down on the spring pressure, you can see how easy it is to get that little 
uh, clip out of there now. Just need a little straight screwdriver. So there's what I do. Once it gets it up over a groove, I just use two screwdrivers and walk around. And one holds it and the other just twists it out of the groove. It's not under a lot of pressure, so you don't got to worry about it springing it back and popping it in the mouth or nothing. That's a different YouTube video entirely. That one's a three million hitter. Okay, so you can see the plate only comes out a little bit. It's already off the spring. Okay. And don't forget, normally you're doing this, the steering column is actually attached to something. So you don't have all the spinning action that I got to deal with because I'm sitting here in a tub without a frame under it. Okay, definitely don't want to lose that clip. I'm pretty sure the new kit doesn't come with one. So make sure you don't lose that. Alright, that's your lock plate. Your uh, locking steering column, so when you turn the key off, you can't move. is because there's a pin that interacts with these little holes, these little grooves around the outside. That's what keeps your, your anti-theft device, right? Well, this one, the pin... Doesn't move. It's it moves, but it doesn't even come out. Alright, so gunged up with grease and crap that it never was doing anything. So I'm gonna address that while we're in here. Alright, this part here, this is for your horn. Okay, it's got a copper back on it. It should be covered in the uh, 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 grease. All right, because it does spin here. There's a, a contact on the other side, spring-loaded contact. So when you push in your horn button here, which is all busted on this one, it gives a contact to this, sends a contact down into your column, and there's your horn button. Meet me in pretty rough shape. And there's that spring that causes us all our grief. All right, so what you're looking at now, this is your turn signal switch, and. Uh, a lot of times you'll get into one of these older cars and you'll put your turn signal on and turn the wheel back and it doesn't cancel. Here are where these springs are. Sometimes these springs will, little plastic tabs will break and the spring won't do anything and it won't pop back. Okay, this one actually works, which is a miracle. You can see down here there's a detent and this big spring right there. Okay, you can buy the entire system and then there's wires that go down off the back of it. But this one's good, so I'm going to try not to break it. What you need to do is take your actual turn signal arm off, which is one Phillips, and then take these three out back here to pull the whole system out so that I can get out the lock cylinder, which, as you can see, is really, really wonky. Take this rusty old turn signal arm over to the wire wheel and give it some loving before I put it back in. I got the rust on that. Woo! A little bit of TLC goes a long way. Oh, forgot one thing. The hazard. Little hazard knob just screws off the bottom. Forgot about that. Alrighty, apologize for the camera. I just can't seem to get it set up in a way where you can see this without having it on my lap. So it may move a little bit. On uh, this is the GM style lock cylinder setup here. All right. On later models, there's a bolt that you take out right here. I think it's usually a hex, and that retains the lock cylinder. But on the early model ones like this, all right, that bolt doesn't exist. What you have to do is you put a small screwdriver like this one, a flathead, or you can make a piece of steel or something, and it goes way up into this slot. So basically beside this screw hole here. And all you do is put it in there, and there's a little spring part that you're pressing. And you can actually see your lock cylinder move when I press it. Once you got that pressed, that's all there is to it. All right, 
what you're doing is you're pressing this piece right here. It's a spring-loaded little lock. All right, so I'll put her back in and show you. Get the cylinders in. Okay, functions normally. Doesn't come out. And you see the problem with this one here. As you're driving, the key falls out and you can still operate the lock. And that's why I want to change it. Not much good like that, is it? There's my key. So anyway, you don't even have to have the key in for this. I just find it's easier because it lets you wiggle. So put your straight screwdriver in here. Look for when you're pushing on that and she slides right out. All right, so that's the tab you're, you're reaching for right there. That's all that holds your lock in is that little spring-loaded widget. All right, so the old cylinder's out. Find my new cylinder. There it is. Put her down while I was talking at you. All right, so obviously you want to check to make sure they're the same before you go jamming it in there. You'll never be able to get it out, okay? And those are virtually identical. As long as the key don't fall out while I'm driving, I'm good. Okay, so there's a new cylinder about to go in. Before I put it in, I just use a little dab of grease and just grease it up a little. All right, just, just a little coating. Makes things roll a little nicer. All right, and then just... Get her lined up with lock, give her a little tap, and you're home. Work. Oh, moving better already. Yeah, you can actually hear it flicking now, whereas before it was all tight, it sounded like there was sound, sand in there. A couple of squirts of light, light oil. That. That's much better. Oh yeah, it's not binding anymore. A lot of rust come out. You can see that. I don't know if you can see it there, but quite a bit of discoloration. Working much better. Okay, assembly just to reverse. Remember, we unplugged our wires. A lot of guys on YouTube, you'll see them reefing on these things. If you want to go and reef on 37-year-old wires. That many of them that run down a steering column, you go right ahead. Me, I'm going to unplug it from the bottom and give it an extra inch of play. Seems like the wiser thing to do to me. All right, no reefing involved. It goes right in and out like nothing. Like it's like it's designed to do that. All right. Again, reverse order. Put your screws back in. You know, you're making these videos, you always feel like you should be talking about something. But sometimes you just want to work. Okay, everything seems to be good. It's nice and tight. Ten seconds on a wire wheel looks like a new arm. All right, so the next part you're gonna put on is your spring, the horn connector, and your lock cylinder plate. All right, spring first. You can actually slide it right in the back of here. And just place that on. It'll spin, it doesn't lock onto the kit column, all right? This is the part that does. Now on these, if you look at the groove pattern, there's one master key on this one it has to line up there's a spot on the column it won't go any other direction all right so make sure you're looking for that one that has no tooth on it what you have to do is rotate the horn adapter part so that it goes through that hole and line up your open key all right so when you go to line it up You'll notice there's the master key right here. So there's one tooth missing. I'm not sure how well you can see that. 
and I've lined up my horn hole or the horn where the button would go with the oval because that horn part will just freewheel in there and there she'll go this will not go on any other way unless you beat it on and then you're breaking off a tooth of your your cam here somewhere so all right okay so we're at a point now where we're ready to put the clip back in the little retainer okay slide that on the column now and just push it down a little ways so yeah you don't have to juggle it that's out of the way put your tool back on and once you can see the slot that's as far as you need to go you don't need to crank it all the way down all right and usually you can do these with your fingers sometimes it's just easier to use a screwdriver certainly less painful get out of here deep yeah this retaining clip has got to be the biggest pain in the ass part of this entire procedure once you get it there you're done all right make sure it's in unscrew your tool all right so we got the grant horn wire in here um it's got the spring on it to help hold it in place you wrap it around don't put it directly through the hole got to know where your top is on your steering column because it says top a on here you want that up otherwise your steering column will be all crooked a uh, little bit of juggling here i've just got this on tight as I can get it by hand it's going to crank down quite a bit uh, so you got your wire to deal with put your little glamour cap on there's an oval hole the wire goes through that it should roughly line up the, your holes let it go whole bunch of things you're trying to line up here and everything's loose uh, not too bad That's the part dad didn't do. He didn't have the right hub on there. So he had nothing to screw his wheel on. So his wheel was wobbly and you turned the wheel and it didn't actually turn the shaft for about 10 degrees of turn in either direction. A little risky for driving. Last thing you need is that nut to loosen up one day and you got no steering doing 100 kilometers an hour. All right, so you can leave those loose for now. Put your big nut back on. All right, big nuts on. Key that doesn't fall out. Wheel that doesn't wiggle on its own. Now we just gotta finish up the horn. All right, last thing you gotta juggle is the horn cap. All right, it clips on the edge of this disc with the spring in there, holds the, the disc off and when you horn it makes contact and there's your horn all right normally you can screw that on the edge there but there doesn't seem to be enough on this one so I gotta juggle it Right there is the way she's supposed to work. So yeah, that in a nutshell is how you do your lock cylinder on the Jeep, and in this case, change the steering wheel or put the proper parts in the steering wheel so it's mounted up the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I can't test the horn because well, there's no Jeep underneath this body tub. Just a body tub sitting on some tires. I don't have any electrical system in the engine compartment. There's no horn. There's nothing there to hook it up to. So we'll have to wait until I get a frame and start putting all that stuff together. My camshaft's supposed to be in here sometime today. It's already late afternoon. They usually don't show up until just before supper. And uh, get my cam parts in and uh, show you the rest of the engine rebuild uh, tomorrow.